Hello everyone, my name is Rainer and welcome back to this week's market analysis. So for those of you who have been following me for quite a while now, I'd like to say, you know, thank you so very much, right? Because each week, you know, I do this market analysis from, you know, week after week, you know, it's all because of you, right? Because without your support and encouragement, without, you know, your enthusiasm, you know, towards trading, I wouldn't be doing this, you know, on a weekly basis. So, you know, for those who have been there for me all along, you know, last few months, last couple of years, I truly want to say thank you. And for those traders who are, you know, recently, you know, just come into, I would say, come into our little community, you know, into this group, right? Or just subscribe to me on YouTube. I'd like to say, you know, thank you for your time as well. Because what I do each week is that I identify, you know, basically the trending markets because I am a trend follower. So I identify trending opportunities in the market, namely on the four hour and on the daily. And I give my thoughts on the market. I look at possible setups I'm looking at. We talk about risk management. We talk about trade management. And from time to time, we talk about psychology and, you know, much more. So I hope you guys, you know, do find it fruitful. And then this week, you know, I'll be looking to cover mainly the majors, right? The major currencies because I've noticed, you know, in recent weeks, you know, it's that the dollar strength has actually tapered quite a bit, right? Seems to be doing a retracement. So I'll be looking at, at most of the Forex majors. We'll look at see which pair still provides a trading opportunity to trade with the dollar as well as cover crude oil because I get quite a number of questions from traders who ask me about crude oil. They're wondering whether crude oil after the slide from 120 to a low of $45, they're wondering whether crude oil is forming a base, whether is it bottoming out. So I'd like to provide my view on it as well. And last but not least, I'll share with you, you know, a couple of trading losses I took this week and all this and more, right? So I'll see you over there. So this is the chart of dollar Canadian and if you notice it right, the 20 and 50 was providing very good dynamic support for quite a while now. And what happened this week was price broke this key support level over here. So price basically broke below and I would say most traders around the world all right, were actually trading dollar Canadian or trading price action. They anticipate that price to retest this previous support turn resistance before seeing a move down lower. So I don't deny that that could be a possibility as well. So dollar Canadian, right? The, I would say the bears at the moment, right? On the daily chart, right? Over the last few weeks, the bear seems to be in control. All right, I wouldn't look to long this pair at the moment. And in fact, you know, I'd rather stay on the sidelines, all right, for dollar Canadian. Now looks, let's look at New Zealand dollar. Again, New Zealand dollar, right? You see that, you know, the 20 and 50 has been providing very good dynamic resistance all along. And right now, price seems to have broken out above the 50 period moving average and is retesting this previous swing high over here. So again, you know, I wouldn't be looking to short this pair as of yet, right? Because, you know, in terms of relative strength, New Zealand dollar isn't exactly the most favorable one. And, you know, I would say, you know, I'll actually just be on the sidelines and watch how this pair develop over the next few weeks, right? So let's look at Aussie dollar again, right? Okay, this is a little different, right, for Aussie dollar. Right, I wouldn't say again, but rather look at the 2050, right? It is still respecting the 2050 over here. So in terms of relative strength, you can conclude that Aussie dollar is one of the weaker ones. And if you want to short, right, this is actually a potential candidate for you. Furthermore, we have this a uh, resistance over here. So likewise, this is, would be a level to pay attention to, right? So at this resistance level, right, price tested once over here, tested twice over here. So there's a potential test or the third time before price trades lower. So it's a level for you to, you know, keep a lookout for. Price action trader typically will deal with for pin bar and engulfing patterns, right? If you're a trend follower like me, you know, I typically look to queue at a level and I'll just short accordingly, you know, I don't typically wait for confirmation because, you know, that suits me and I'm very comfortable doing that. So looking next would be the pound dollar. Again, similar theme as the Aussie dollar has not break out of the 50 period moving average, right? So again, price is also respecting the 20 and 50 on a daily. So resistance coming up over here. So the pound dollar is another one to watch out for at this key resistance level. And I would say among all the majors that I've covered, my favorite would be the euro dollar. And why is that, right? Because look at it in terms of relative strength. Earlier we, we mentioned that the Aussie dollar was pretty weak, pound dollar is also pretty weak. But in terms of euro dollar, one thing stands out from the euro dollar is that price has not even retraced enough to touch the 50 period moving average, right? Price is currently here and 50 period moving average is over here. Price has not even retest the 50 period moving average as of yet. But you look at the pound dollar, price has already touched the 50 period moving average as well as the Aussie dollar. 
price has in fact closed above the 50 period moving average. So in terms of relative strength, I can conclude that Euro dollar is definitely definitely a pair that is relatively weaker. So if you're looking for shots, honestly for me, you know, I would prefer to short the Euro dollar compared to the other majors. Right? I wouldn't look to short the New Zealand dollar, wouldn't look to long, long the dollar Canadian, right? My selection in terms of relative strength is Euro dollar. So again, this is just uh, because I trade in a way whereby I like to identify the weakest pair to trade and looking at which right now euro dollar seems to be the weakest so a potential trading opportunity is like you know should price come back and retest this resistance over here i'll look to short it with a limit sell order so yep that's all my intake for the currencies so now let's look at uh let's look at crude oil shall we because it's a pair that you know i get a lot from traders out there asking me whether you know crude oil crude oil has bottomed out so this is the daily chart of crude oil so let's scroll back a little in time right we noticed that Again, once again, crude oil also, it, it was respecting the 2050 for a good chunk period of time, right? So over here, it acted as a dynamic resistance. And the first time price tested the low, I think from my chart, it shows about $44. Then the second time it tested, it rallied higher. Then it came back all the way down, tested $44 once more and rallied higher. So some traders will call it a, a, what they call a triple bottom or a W shape formation. Oh, w is double bottom, sorry. So it's a, some call it a, I'll say a triple bottom. So my take on this is this, all right? Price actually retested the lows twice, right? And both times it retested, right? There wasn't any further sell-off. So it's telling me that, you know, traders are not lo looking to sell at that price level of $44 anymore, all right? So I wouldn't say I'm bullish right now, right? But nonetheless, you know, it's, there's no reason for me to be bearish either because price actually did close above this resistance over here. We had this a uh, three touches of 44, one, two, and three. So basically, you know, concluding that it's possibly a triple bottom. So nonetheless, you know, although price is, has broke out of this resistance over here in the short term, right, we have, I can expect actually bullish momentum towards the up upside. But as a trend follower, I typ typically like to, you know, trade trends when all the different, when all the higher time frame are actually in sync. With the daily as well so but the only concern that i have right because i typically trade a four and daily charts right is i would like to have the weekly chart to actually confirm my bias but looking at the weekly chart right honestly you know it's still far from you know saying that this is a bullish chart right because just look at this chart what is what is clear is that we have this a bottom over here right double bottom right this is the resistance that price seems to have break above this week and i wouldn't be you know too bullish on it right now on this weekly chart i still would like to see further price momentum in my favor right maybe possibly what i'm looking for is a higher high and higher lows because it's something that i've not seen on the weekly chart yet so basically I, I would like to see price trading higher come back retrace lower and after which trade higher once more taking out this swing high over here because if that happens then it's telling you telling me that there is a series of higher high and higher lows and that will actually you know hint to me or tell me that you know on the weekly chart right momentum is shifting towards the upside so until that happens, all right, I would remain neutral on crude oil, all right? I wouldn't be too bullish, I wouldn't be too bearish, but I rather I would choose to stay neutral on it. So I wouldn't expect any for myself, right? According to my trading plan, I'm I don't anticipate any trading opportunities for crude oil, but it's still you know a market that you can trade if your trading plan say so, so right? Because no two traders have the same identical trading plan, right? What I have and what you have is perhaps maybe entirely different. I trade the four hours and daily. Perhaps you trade the one hour and you know fifteen minutes. Again, you know we have very very different trading plans. So trade what I would say. Trade what your trading plan says, right? And you know always trade if the trend is my I would say my mantra, right? So moving on, I'll share with you a couple of trades I took this week, you know, and results in a, a cut loss trade. So you know it's still good to share. Perhaps you can learn something from it. So as you recall, you no know, soybeans last week. I said you no know, price was retesting this multi-year lows, right? So I, I said that, you know, I was anticipating a break of the multi-year lows. But apparently, the break didn't come through. And in fact, we had this uh, uh, higher close, right, this week. So let's look at where I got shot, right? So basically, on a four-hour chart, I got shot over here when price was consolidating here. So basically, I had a sell stop over the order over here and I had a stop loss of 2 ATR, I think it was maybe somewhere around, I think somewhere here, I guess. So I got stopped out when price traded higher. So, yep. Nothing, I would say, no shame about it, right? Losses is part and parcel of trading, especially trend following when I typically win about 30% of, of the time. So losses are, you know, something that I, I've gotten really used to it, right? And another trade I took which uh, resulted in a loss as well is natural gas, right? Let's look at natural gas. On the weekly chart, remember I said that natural gas, right? Price seems to be doing, doing this squeeze period, right? Because we have smaller and smaller candles. Then uh, last couple of weeks back, we saw this bearish candle towards the downside and also creating another multi-year loss. But this week, what we had was again, a bullish candles to bullish candle towards the upside which got me stopped out of my trade as well 
So looking at which, I think it was the 4-hour chart where I got shot. So basically, we see that, you know, price had this impulse move lower, then it had this tight consolidation. I basically had a sell stop order over here with a stop loss of 2 ATR, and I got stopped out of it as well. Basically, I think I got stopped out at this candle over here. So again, you know, it's very common as a trend follower, you know, and especially very common when you uh, only win 30% of the time, you will actually encounter... I would say losing trades after losing trades. And looking back at my historical record, I saw the maximum losing trades I had was 16, right? No joke about it. I lost 16 trades in a row, right? And you encounter this if you're a trend follower, right? And so the, the cr cr critical thing to take note of is actually to manage your risk, manage your downside, right? If, for example, you have 16 losses in a row, for example, for me, and you're risking typically, say, 5% a trade, you know, you're good as, I would say, busting your trading account because your drawdown will be as much as 80%. And it's... Pretty, pretty tough to recover from 80% drawdown. So as a trend follower, you know, one of the crux to, you know, successful trading to longevity in your trading is actually to manage your risk. Keep it as low as possible to a level where you are perfectly comfortable taking losing trades after losing trades, right? Because all you need is just simply, you know, one trend to pay it all, right? So basically, my typical, I would say, equity curve looks something like this, you know. I had, uh, you know, say a, a, a trend, right? I catch a big trend, moves up like that. So then after that, I face drawdown, losing trade, 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 losing trade. You get a message, right? Losing trade, losing trade, losing trade. And bam, when I catch another trend, goes up higher. Then I'm losing trade, 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 losing trade. Catch a trend, up higher again. So basically, how do I attain this strong impulse move towards the upside on my equity curve? It's because... I write the trend, right? I hold on to my winners, I trail my stops accordingly, and I let the trend pay for all the little lo losers that I incur along the way, right? So, and the only way to survive long enough to capture trends in the market is to actually keep your risk to a, I will say, to a very comfortable and safe level, right? If you're risking 5% a trade and you're a trend follower, chances are these drawdowns, right, will be so much more steeper that, you know, you probably pass your entire trading account. So I always suggest, you know, do not risk more than 1% a trade, a trade, especially if you're a trend follower. And in fact, you know, if you can risk 0 0.5, all right, I will say go for it because the lower your risk per trade, right, the chances are you will survive the drawdown and when and when the trend finally emerge, you are able to, you know, recover all the little losses that you have incurred along the way. And this is trend following for you. Trend following is not intraday trading. It's not scalping whereby, you know, if you are a professional scalper, you know, trading the order flow whereby you have a 70 to 80% hit rate, you know, this, that is a different game altogether, right? Trend following is on the opposite side of the spectrum. It has a low winning percentage, but a much higher risk to reward. So this is something to share. Sorry, I mean a better risk to reward, right? A better risk to reward. So this is something to share with you guys. Hope you guys find it useful. And that's all I have for you guys this week, alright? If you enjoy this video, right, what you can do is actually hit the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen, right? Then after which every week whenever the video is published, you will be notified immediately. So I wish you guys I wish you guys good luck and good trading, right? If there's anything, leave comments on the YouTube page, leave comments on my website because I reply to every comment. So I'll talk to you soon.